Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed learning about graphs last week because this week we are going to build on the knowledge from last week and we're going to continue to talk about graphs. So, the problem that we're going to answer today in this video, we're all going to use this graph here at the top. Okay? So, let's first look at the title of the graph. It says, this graph is about animals at the park. So we're going to look at our other labels. Right here, it says we're going to see the animals. There's a squirrel, a chipmunk, a rabbit, and a robin. Here yeah, on the bottom is where we're going to see the number of animals. Zero through five. So let's start at the squirrel and go down. And it is at a four, so there were four squirrels at the park. So chipmunks go down to the end of the bar, two. There were two chipmunks at the park. There was only one rabbit and three robins. So for these problems, number two, it says, write a question that the graph could be used to solve. Then we're going to solve that question. So, what kind of questions could we be asking? Let's think about it. So, the graph tells us a lot about animals and how many animals there are. So, we could ask what animal was the most seen at the park? What animal was the least seen at the park? How many chipmunks and robins were there at the park? There's so many different questions we could ask. So think to yourself, what kind of question would you ask? I'm going to say, hmm, what animal has the highest number at the park. So if we look back at our graph and we try to find the animal that had the most there, we can see it was the squirrel because if we said there were four squirrels at the park. We can also see that this ball right here was the longest out of all of them, showing that it was the most or had the highest number. So our answer to the question I made is squirrel. Let's go to our next question. It says, write a question about the data in the graph above that you can use with this addition sentence to solve. So it says three plus two equals five. Okay, so we need to go back and look at the data on our graph. What animal had three? That was a robin. And which animal had two? That was the chipmunk. So it shows in that question that we're adding the robins and the chipmunks together to make five. So the question we could write is how many robins and chipmunks were at the park. Okay, because that is the, the data that correlates with the question shown there. All right, let me erase this and we can move down 
to our last question using this graph. It says, look at the bar graph. What do you know about the data just by looking at the different lengths of the bars? Okay, so this is a great question because this is something you may notice when you very first look at the graph, okay? Before you have analyzed it a lot or before you've answered a bunch of other questions, something like this is something you notice immediately when you first look at the graph. So what can we see? I'm gonna write off to the side the things we could see and tell from the data on this graph. So we said the squirrels had the most, okay? So we can see that the squirrels were the most because it had the longest bar. See, because this bar right here is longer than all the other ones. We can say that we saw that the rabbits were smallest because it had the shortest bar. See, this bar is so much tinier than the other ones. What else could we see? We could see that how many there were total if we added all the numbers up. We could see that there's more robins than rabbits because this bar is longer than that bar. And we could see that there are more robins than chipmunks because this bar is longer than this bar right here. Those are all things that when we first look at a graph, some assumptions and thoughts that we could have when we're trying to look through and compile all of that data. All right, guys. So we are going to move down and answer some more questions. So this graph is a little different from some of our other graphs, okay? So we have two graphs here. This graph that's using our normal bar, and this graph that's using these dots. It's very similar to the pictograph with the smiley faces we saw last week. So, on here though, the numbers at the bottom are very different from the other numbers we've been seeing last week on our other graph. So remember I told you some graphs have a key to let you know what the picture on the graph means. It's just something a little different. So if you look down here at the very bottom of the graph, it says that each of the dots stands for two flowers. Okay, so that's really important. We can also look at our bars on this graph. And if we look at the number of flowers down here, we see it goes 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And if you use our method from earlier in the year, you can use our little carrot to show that there is a change of 2 each number go to. All right. So that is a little different from our other graphs because we've been seeing them only count by one unit at a time. So let's go through and analyze our graph. So we have our roses go to the end and it shows eight. So there were eight roses. Tulip, if we go down to the end of the bar, it shows four. There were four tulips. Daisies, it goes all the way to the very end of the graph to a 10. There were 10 daisies. And our violets go down to here, there were six. Now, 
we will still count by twos for every one of these spots we see. So the rows is two, four, six, eight, eight. See, just like the other graph. On tulips, two, four. For tulips, daisies, two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten daisies. And on violet, two, four, six. Six violet. So these two graphs are the same, okay? Because they're using the same amount. Okay, so they're different because one is using bars and the other one is using these dots, very similar to our pictograph, but they're showing the same data, the same numbers. So, let's go to our first question. Our first question said, how many roses are in the garden? So we can either look at our bar graph or our pictograph, whichever one you like best. And we saw that there were eight. So we can say that there were eight roses. So, now we're moving in to a couple of questions that you'll need to use your four-step process for. So. Number two, let's draw our four square. It says how many more daisies than roses were in the garden? So we can see that there were 10 daisies and there were eight roses. That means we're going to use some subtraction. So we said I want to know how many more daisies will this be than roses? We're just going to put an R. So we're going to draw our square. A little bar right here, and this whole thing is 10 because that's how many daisies we have. And then we're going to color a little portion in, and this portion right here is our eight roses. So we want to know what goes in that area right there. So we're going to say 10 minus 8 equals what? So we're going to use our place value chart of 10s and 1s. So we have a 10. We're going to use our subtrahend to subtract 8. Oh, look, we don't have any 1s over here. So we're going to have to move those 10 back over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we are going to get rid of 8 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That leaves us with 2. So the answer is there are 2 more daisies than there were roses. And in our last box, we'll say we subtracted eight from 10 to equal two. All right, let's go to our last question on here. It says, how many Tulips and violets are in the garden. So, and is a key word for us, and that signals that we are going to use some addition because we're adding things together. Okay, so let's look and see. We see for the tulips, there were four tulips, and for the violets, there were six violets. Okay. So let's draw our chart and solve. So we want to know 
how many tulips and violets. Okay, when we're answering these questions, don't forget to use your four step process. So over here, we're going to show that we had four. And then we are going to add on six. So in this box, we're going to do four plus six equals what? So we're going to do our place value chart. So we had one, two, three, four. And then we're going to add six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We hit ten. So we need to bundle these up and move them next door to make one rod or one pin. So our answer. And we can write down here is that there are 10 tulips and violets. And over here, we're going to say that we added four and six to get 10. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and read. I have one more question to go over with y'all. So, this question is a big one. Sometimes we get stuck on questions like this because there's a lot going on. Okay? So, we're going to read the question really carefully. It says, How many more roses and tulips? Are there than daisies? Oh my gosh, so many things are going on here. So let's take it step by step. So we said there were eight roses and it says and, okay, so we would add eight to our tulips and we said there were four. And we want to know how many that is compared to how many daisies we have, which was 10. So let's do our four step process to answer this. So it says, how many more roses and tulips than daisies. Okay, so we are going to do over here our eight. Roses plus our four tulips. Okay, and down here we're gonna draw our other one with our daisies. Okay, and there were 10 daisies. So we need to do two different things here. We are going to say Eight plus four equals question mark. We don't know yet. So let's do a place value chart and figure that out. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is our eight roses. Then we're going to add four. One, two, three, four. Those were our four tools. So let's see how many we have over here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
Okay, we already had 10. So let's bundle up 10 and move them next door. Okay, so that means we have 12. There are 12 day roses and tulips. We want to know how many more of those were there than daisies. So we're going to do 12 minus 10 equals what? So let's draw our place value here. Find out. So 10, 11, 12. And then we're going to draw our subtrahend and we're taking away 10. So we're not taking anything away from the ones place, but we are taking away the 10 from the tens place. So that leaves us with just two. So at the very end, our answer is going to be two. There were two more roses and tulips. So over here, we're going to have a lot of information. So first, We added eight and four to equal twelve. Then we subtracted ten from. 12 to equal 2. And that was our final answer. Okay, guys, I've had a great time teaching y'all today more about these awesome graphs we're learning about. And I can't wait to hear from you and see all your awesome graph work. You can always call me if you have any questions. Bye, guys. Have a great week.